مساء الخير واهلا بكم الى حلقه جديده من واشنطن اونلاين معي انا هدي العويس وكيف ستتعامل اداره الرئيس جو بايدن مع الملف السوري في السنه الاخيره المتبقيه قبيل انتخابات الرئاسه 2024 هذا ما ابحثه في حلقه اليوم من واشنطن اونلاين وضيوفي هذه الحلقه هما السيد سكوت اندرسون المستشار القانوني لوزاره الخارجيه الامريكيه في ملف مكافحه تنظيم داعش في سوريا والعراق ينضم إلينا من العاصمة الأمريكية واشنطن ابقوا معنا للمتابعة سيد أندرسون سوريا هي بلد لدى الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية فيها جنود جيش مهمة عسكرية معقدة كانت تقارع من خلالها أبشع التنظيمات التي عرفتها البشرية تنظيم داعش الإرهابي ما هو الوضع القانوني لهذه المهمة ولماذا لا نرى بالتزامن مع هذا العمل العسكري جهد وعمل سياسي كبير بقدر العمل العسكري لإصلاح ما يمكن إصلاحه في المشهد السوري Sure. Well, the United States has pretty clearly articulated what its legal theory is as to how uh, and why it is allowed under international law and domestic law uh, to have U.S. troops in Syria. The domestic law argument, which is probably of less interest to your audience, but I'll, I'll flag it briefly, is that um, they are covered by the same law that the United States enacted shortly after the 9-11 attacks um, to allow for global counterterrorism operations targeting al-Qaeda and the related groups. Um, this is on the theory that ISIS, which has operated and continues to operate out of Syria, is a splinter group from al-Qaeda uh, and therefore is covered by that same authorization. And that's been the domestic legal basis since 2014, when the United States first intervened in Syria against as part of the counter-ISIS operation. The international legal theory is not entirely dissimilar. Uh, the United States has made clear that it is acting both in its own self-defense against uh, ISIS and associated groups in uh, Syria, as well as in Iraq, although that combat operations there have, have largely wound up um, and are mostly handled by Iraqi forces now. Um, but they make clear they're both acting in their own self-defense and at the request of the government of Iraq, which came to the United Nations and asked for the assistance of various states in defending themselves against the uh, ISIS during the onslaught in 2014. That has been the international legal basis for operating in Syria. And the United States' legal theory, which is a little bit of a controversial one, is that when a non-state actor like ISIS is operating out of a foreign state, and that state proves unable or unwilling to address the threat to those other states, meaning in this case, the United States and Iraq presented by that non-state actor, then international law allows those threatened states to take military action against that non-state actor without, uh, despite normally that being a prohibited activity, normally that would be a violation of that state's so uh, sovereignty. The whole world has not signed on to this theory, uh, although a number, most participants in the counter-ISIS coalition, which is a fairly broad coalition of mostly European and Western states, uh, but some Middle Eastern states as well, um, most of them have bought into it, or at least have gone along with it in the case of the United States and a handful of other countries that have used a similar theory to pursue military operations in Syria historically. That's still the legal basis for the U.S. troop presence in Syria to this day, as far as I am aware, um, unless there's been some new development that hasn't gotten a lot of publicity. Um, and it's consistent with the general mission they're pursuing, which continues to be primarily a counter-ISIS mm -hmm. mission. سيد أندرسون هناك اليوم من يعيد علاقاته الدبلوماسية مع دمشق ويحاول إعادة الأوضاع إلى ما كانت عليه قبل الحرب السورية ولكن هناك تجاهل نقطة مهمة وهي أنه في شمال شرق سوريا أكثر من ثلث الأراضي السورية تسيطر عليها الإدارة الذاتية التي يوجد أيضا في أراضيها قوات سوريا الديمقراطية ومجلس سوريا الديمقراطية هذه الإدارة الذاتية التي سيصبح عمرها عقد من الزمن عشر سنوات في نوفمبر المقبل كيف ستتعامل إدارة الرئيس جو بايدن وكيف ستتعامل الحكومات الأمريكية المقبلة مع الواقع في شمال شرق سوريا أي واقع تفضل أمريكا لشمال شرق سوريا مستقبلا؟ It is an incredibly difficult policy with related legal intersection question about how the United States and frankly the broader international community should approach the Assad regime at this point. Uh, the Assad regime has very well documented horrendous human rights abuses that's been pursuing for uh, the better part of a decade, more than a decade now. Um, and the international community has been very outspoken about that being a problem, that being a di disqualifying element for the Assad regime's claims to legitimacy in Syria. Uh, yet at the same time, it's pretty clear, I think, at this point, the Assad regime is not going anywhere uh, to remain in power. Um, and that at this point, um, 
the fact that it is in power in substantial parts of the country, it's also rebuilding its capability. And at some point, it is going to be in a better position to potentially reassert control over parts of the country that it doesn't currently control. And that includes parts of the country run by the Syrian de Democratic Forces, um, which are the U.S. partners on the ground. Uh, that is going to be a really tricky situation. Um, now, it's worth noting the SDF, as far as I'm aware, they haven't really made a case saying they want independence from Syria. They have essentially argued for high amounts of autonomy and self-governance within this framework of the state of Syria. Um, and so there may yet be room for engagement between the Assad regime and these forces to some extent, if some sort of common uh, alignment can be worked out. Uh, and that might be the sort of strategic goal that might drive the United States to eventually engage with the Assad regime as part of this normalization process. Um, but it, it, that's still a little ways down the road at this point, I think. Sayyid Anderson, بعد كل العقوبات التي تطبقها الولايات المتحدة على سوريا، هل يمكن أن نرى عودة للعلاقات الدبلوماسية مع دمشق؟ وهناك اليوم حديث فعلاً عن لقاءات سرية تعقد بين مسؤولين في الخارجية الأمريكية والحكومة السورية في دول مثل سلطنة عمان. ما هو سبب وهدف هذه اللقاءات من وجهة نظرك؟ وهل يمكن أن تعود عقارب الساعة إلى الوراء فيما يتعلق بالعلاقات الأمريكية السورية؟ It's it's possible to some extent. Uh, you know, the trade-off is essentially as long as there is an ISIS threat, and it doesn't seem likely an, an ISIS threat of some sort is going away anytime soon, the United States will have a legal hook for, to continue to support the SDF in Syria in their counter-ISIS mission. But part of supporting them in that counter-ISIS mission historically has been also defending them from attacks by third parties. So that has included attacks by the Assad regime at times, by the Wagner Group uh, and other allies of the Assad regime, various Iran-backed militias, have been targeted by U.S. military operations in defense of SDF forces in the past few years. Relatively rarely, but it has happened. And so, so long as that ISIS hook is there, the United States may well be feel they're in a position to continue to back the SDF claims of autonomy, again, not independence, but autonomy as part of that SDF mission on the basic logic that the Assad regime doesn't seem able or willing to tackle the ISIS threat. Now, does that claim, does that analysis become less credible as the Assad government becomes more capable and maybe more willing to come, take on ISIS? It might. Uh, and so that legal argument is kind of eroding over time, but I'm not sure it's quite at a crisis or collapse point yet. Um, certainly, it's something the United States, I have no doubt, is thinking about mm -hmm. saying, well, in the near term, at some point, we're going to have to justify what we're doing here in a way that better aligns with the facts on the ground, which are changing. Um, but I, I think at this point, it's unlikely they're going to feel compelled to dramatically change their approach in the short term, um, mm -hmm. despite the actions taken by regional governments to normalize. Those steps are significant. I mean, it does mean the Assad regime is on the path to normalization with parts of the region that probably matter most to it. But I don't think it'd be difficult for the United States to still maintain a fair amount of distance from the Assad regime, even as Gulf allies and other states in the region begin to re-engage it. In fact, I suspect that will be the more normal path to normalization, um, where the region directly around the Assad regime will be a kind of on a faster pace than the rest of the world, which has adopted a very strong stance against the Assad regime. And it's going to take uh, a lot longer to step towards normalization if they ever fully get there. Said Anderson, أنت تعرف هناك تحديات كثيرة ليس فقط تحدي الحكومة السورية لمنطقة شمال شرق سوريا والإدارة الذاتية وهو التحدي التركي، التهديدات التركية المستمرة والخلاف التركي الأمريكي حول مسألة دعم أمريكا لقوات سوريا الديمقراطية، هل ممكن أن نشهد جهود دبلوماسية كبيرة من واشنطن في سبيل تخفيف حدة التوترات بين أنقرة وبين قوات سوريا الديمقراطية لكي يكون هناك استقرار uh, you know, uh, I think some diplomatic effort has been made to that effect, um, but I think the idea that they're going to come together or reach a composition is probably a little unrealistic. Uh, there are very kind of dug in positions um, between the SDF, particularly the kind of dominant Kurdish contingent uh, of the SDF. Um, and the Turkish government. They have a lot, a lot of longstanding grievances and longstanding level of hostility between the two. I think a, a more realistic target, which I'm sure US diplomats have, are on a continuing effort to try and encourage, is a degree of deconfliction, an effort to get them out of each other's way so that they can pursue or allow each other to pursue those objectives that are their common interests, which is primarily a counter ISIS mission. It's worth noting that the kind of Turkish controlled parts of Syria 
are the parts where a lot of ISIS leaders and other groups have been located in military operations. Um, and uh, so it's a sign that Turkey is having its own challenges in controlling that territory, certainly from a counter ISIS perspective. Although, again, their objective may be more about the SDF and particularly the Kurdish groups within the SDF and, and opposing them. Um, it's a really difficult situation. It's not clear how you can bring them on the same page, given that they are one sees the other as a threat to each other and to some a substantial extent, vice versa. There might be space around uh, finding ways to right size and adjust Turkey's operations in Syria. Again, I mean, it is a costly military operation. It's not clear it's being entirely successful for its goal. Um, Erdogan has now accomplished re-election uh, and so may feel he has a little more flexibility to change aspects of his policy that he may have been resistant to changing when he felt politically vulnerable. Um, so maybe there's some space there, uh, but I think it's a big question mark. I'm not sure we 100% know, and I wouldn't hold my breath towards anything dramatic there. Um, uh, in the immediate term. Um, but again, there may be more flexibility in the, in the months to come. Thank you very much, Dr. Sayed Scott Anderson, the Minister of the Law of the United States of America. You were with us from Washington. And to end, thank you for watching today from Washington Online. I'll see you in the next week. Until the next week.